A very good morning to you. You are watching ITN News. Let's take a look at today's headlines first. The president wants to make university students ready for the job market. UNP in crisis due to new alliance name and symbol. Revenge Commission begins work. World Bank praises the country's health system. And in headlines overseas, US charges four Chinese military officers over huge hack in Equifax. I'm here to announce the indictment of Chinese military hackers, specifically four members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. And now we move on to the news in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksha has drawn his attention to reviving the university curricula to meet the demands of the job market. The president expressed these views at a meeting held with the officials of the University Grants Commission and the vice chancellors of the universities. President Rajapaksha stressed the need to formulate a national education policy. He also advised remove the restrictions to the students of Kotelawala Defence University to follow procedures of the law college. The president instructed to provide high-speed internet facilities for university students' research. Meanwhile, President Gotabe Rajapaksha also visited Valikada prison. He said that a committee would be appointed to look into the current situation at prisons. The working committee meeting of the UNP ended with no agreement on the symbol and name of the alliance to be formed in collaboration with the United National Party and other parties. It is reported that opposition leader Sajid Premadasa left the meeting in protest of the working committee decisions. The UNP working committee meeting was held under the patronage of party leader Ranil Bikrama Singha. MP Ranjit Madhuma Bandara, who was proposed for the position of the General Secretary of the Alliance, was unanimously endorsed by the working committee. Many of those who attended the working committee expressed their dissatisfaction over the disorder in the party. The Presidential Commission to look into political revenge, which took place during the previous regime, was inaugurated at the BMICH. The Commission looks into cases of political victimization that happened between January 8, 2015 and November 16, 2019. The Presidential Commission will cover government agencies, the armed forces and the police service. Receiving complaints to the Commission commenced will continue till the 20th of this month. Retired Supreme Court Judge Upalia Beratna chairs the commission and retired Court of Appeal Judge Daya Chandra Sirijaya Tilaka and retired IGP Chandra Fernando are the other members. Hartwig Shah for the World Bank's Vice President for the South Asia region was, has held discussions with health officials and praised the country's health system. He commends the progress of the project of the Ministry of Health to promote primary health services in the island. Hartwig Shafa arrived in Sri Lanka recently and paid special attention on the activities of the primary health care system in Sri Lanka being implemented under a World Bank relief loan with an investment of 200 million US dollars. Hartwig Schaaf noted that among the development projects implemented by the World Bank over the years, the project of strengthening the primary health care system in Sri Lanka has been a highly successful initiative. The Colombo High Court stated that the order pertaining to the revised indictment paper against the chairman of the avant-garde company, Nisanka Senadipati, and the other defendants will be delivered on the 20th of this month. The revised indictment papers had been filed in connection with the operation of an unlicensed floating armory off the coast of Gaul. The additional Solicitor General appearing on behalf of the Attorney General said that five defendants who had been acquitted have been included in the new indictment. Attorneys appeared on behalf of the defendants stated that the re-entry of these defendants is illegal. According to the amended indictment papers, 882 charges have been filed against the defendants. 
Meanwhile, the case against parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha and five others under Money Laundering Act was fixed for further trial on February 12th by Colombo High Court. Sri Lankan health authorities state that the dengue menace has raised its head in early 2020 at an alarming rate. According to the epidemiology unit of the health ministry, 11,352 cases, doubling the number of reported cases during the same period in 2019. Two deaths have been reported across the country due to dengue. Health officials say the public should be vigilant on mosquito breeding sites and take steps to destroy them on a regular basis. At least 30 minutes per week should be allocated to clean mosquito breeding sites. Construction sites are the most vulnerable places in case of dengue mosquito breeding. Medical experts advise pregnant women suffering from fever to consult nearest hospitals for medical treatment. All patients with dengue symptoms need to avoid work or schooling. And that's all the news we have for you today. I'm Umayangi Vijay Surya signing off. Have a pleasant day.